Hello everybody, I'm going to talk about the Shamima Begum case and uh, how it was decided by the Court of Appeal. The first thing to talk about this case is that the main appeal by Shamima Begum is in the Special Immigration Appeals Commission. This a court of appeal only heard a specific point, which is whether Shamima Begum is permitted to enter the UK to instruct her lawyers in her case before the SIAC, the Special Immigration Appeals Commission. So it's on a very limited point that the case is um, in the court of appeal. So these were some of the recent developments that the UK government lost the case in the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal held that Shamima is allowed to come back and instruct lawyers in the interest of fairness uh, in the trial. So she's uh, allowed to come back and instruct them for the case which is before the SIAC. However, that's not the last word on it because the UK government has appealed this and in November the case will come up in the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court would then hear whether Shamima should be allowed to come back. I have analyzed the Court of Appeal decision in a conversation blog. Uh, there's the link for it. Uh, you can read it up. I will analyze what the Supreme Court says as well. So who is Shamima Begum? She is very famous because um, her case was notorious as she is British by birth. And while she was a schoolgirl, she was recruited to travel to Syria. And whether or not what kind of activities she took part in over there, we don't really know. What we know is that she married a Dutch citizen who is a foreign fighter, that is someone of Western uh, nationality who comes and takes up arm um, in uh, conflict ridden areas like Syria. We know that she lost uh, several children at infancy. And then when she was pregnant with her um, latest, the child, who died a few months back. She at that time wanted to come back to the UK to give birth to her child. She wanted to return as for the safety of the child. But around the same time, it is claimed that she gave a very unrepentant interview in which she says she doesn't regret anything that she saw in Syria. So uh, while we don't know exactly what she did, the Home Secretary stripped her of British citizenship, the baby died, and then she challenged the cancellation of her citizenship in the Special Immigration Appeals Commission, which is the main case. So while she has been permitted to return, what's the basis on which she has been permitted to return? Her lawyers gave evidence that they could not contact her and they could not get any instructions from her. And the court found this quite um, uh, persuasive. And they said that the in, in the interests of a fair case taking place, she should be allowed to return. Moreover, the Court of Appeal also observed that there was no evidence of her particularly being a national security threat. Now, how do we know that? Because the Special Immigration Appeals Commission has got a um, has got a closed judgment, which is not available to everyone, the basis of the evidence or what findings in it, and an open judgment. So how do we really know about the fact that there is no real evidence that's been put forward yet? It's because in the open judgment, the SIAC judges have referred to the fact that both their open and their closed judgment are based on the same evidence. So we know that there is nothing extra on record and what is on record does not indicate anything as of now in terms of her role in um, being a national security threat. But the court said if she is a national security threat, which is possible, in that case, there are other means available to neutralize that threat, which is question her, detain her, put her through the criminal justice system which is an interesting observation because surely that applies to most of the cancellation cases. But also the court did something very interesting. For the first time ever, the court advised the SIAC, the Special Immigration Appeals Commission, to act like an appellate court, which means take into account the full merits of a case, not just selectively review things like a judicial review forum, but do a full merits review. So if they are supposed to do that, a much more wider scope of review comes in. And so I think even if the government succeeds in its appeal in the Supreme Court and Shamima is not allowed to come back in, 
to participate. This part of the case is going to stand in which the court is directing the SIAC to act as a full appeals court, and that itself is very interesting from a national security perspective. Right, so that's really one of the new directions that have been set by the Court of Appeal. Also, interestingly, generally we see that you know appeals courts don't make extra observations but in this case the court says that there she's there's nothing available about her national security participation uh, risk then the court also mentions that this is a case where we need to think about grooming we need to think about child rights and it's not been adequately done which is again interesting so it's quite a different kind of uh, case because usually we know when there is national security element judges seem to accept all kinds of modification to the special procedures that are available so it's quite an exceptional case from that uh, point so um, in a sense though what happened to Shamima's cases that although she was not actually holding another citizenship, she has been stripped off her British citizenship, despite being only British with British, uh, well, one uh, person who had a British passport parent and the other one had long-term status. Anyway, she was born here. She's Her parents are of Bangladeshi origin, but on the basis that Bangladeshi nationality law gives her an eligibility to opt for Bangladesh nationality until age 21. So it's basis of that eligibility through the migrancy connection of her parents that she is stripped because she cannot be stateless. And this is despite Bangladesh saying they will not take her back and in fact, they will seek the death penalty. Her current location is in camps in Syria, which means in effect, she is stateless, whether or not we find a technical basis of saying she's got another nationality. But the significance of Sharima Begum's case is not just about her personal story, which is kind of uh, interesting and compelling, of course, but the fact that it means that if you're a second generation British, and through the ethnicity, through the links of your parents, and depending on what some other country's legislation says about eligibility, you may still be subject to cancellation. And this is something that didn't really happen until this case, which is why it's so significant. I hope to analyze um, what the Supreme Court says in a few days and share that with you as well. Thank you.